background. Mm -hmm. background. So uh, the title is Evaluation of the Water and Energy Process. So many times we use a uh, you know, bunch of different data set about the remote sensing and also we use uh, some uh, data simulation techniques. So this is uh, highly related with the uh, water resources and management and uh, some point of the hydrology. So, uh, <coughs> okay, so uh, this is the, the index. So uh, climate change and the water resources and also something about the remote sensing. Also, uh, my lab is name is WRLSN. So uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, subtitles soil moisture and even transpiration and drought and the rainforest. So also uh, instead of the, uh, the uh, remote sensing, I also provide a brief description of the land subs modeling and then also the, uh, the, the uh, conclusion will be provided in the last slide. Okay, so this is the you know, typical you know, climate change and the water cycle. And also we have very limited fresh water uh, uh, amount and you know, a lot of the regions that currently we have the climate change and the, you know, very drastic population growth. And this is the, uh, 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 one of the uh, important, you know, aspect of the hydrology and also uh, rural resource management. There's a lot of, you know, uh, uh, problems that happen is the flooding and drought and also uh, some of the El Nino and La Nina. So we, 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 we think that the accurate is a more reliable estimation about the land surface and also uh, uh, atmospheric uh, interactions is more important to provide a uh, uh, reliable estimation of the water cycle. So we, we think that the, uh, based, on, based on the uh, water cycle, this is a water cycle. I, did, I think you know, most, most researches actually uh, were conducted in precipitation and the rainfall and also uh, uh, the runoff and a lot of stream flow uh, uh, simulations. So beside that one is the evapotranspiration or also uh, uh, soil moisture is, you know, you know tend to less uh, studied in, in hydrology department because uh, this is the, uh, 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 each time independent and isolate the field experiment can't provide more reliable estimation for the huge and larger areas. So the remote sensing techniques, you know, the basically one of the uh, charming techniques to provide aerial average value for the hydrology sessions. So this is remote sensing. So uh, uh, I think it's in, in, in a lot of portions, ecology and hydrology and rural resources in, in a bunch of these, you know, science, a lot of remote sensing techniques you currently use them. Uh, uh, also in Korea, we have a bunch of the different types of the satellite. The currently we have the COMS satellite, and this is the seventh gold satellite to provide hydrology and hydro hydrometeorology variables. So in my labs, we, uh, so this is the uh, you know, kind of the uh, big pictures of my labs. We, we're doing some research for the uh, evapotranspiration, and this is the actually a global map from uh, 2000 to 2006. This is average value. And then this is a more intense, intensive uh, estimation about the uh, actual event transpiration. So using some of the energy balance models. And then we use uh, some precipitation from the GPM, uh, also the uh, trims, and also we use uh, some radar data set. And this is also uh, uh, some of the drought estimation using uh, remotely sensed uh, event transpiration and soil moisture information. The last uh, uh, right hand size. Actually, we, we, we conducted some uh, validation network that is also very important because uh, uh, the first one, first important thing about the validation of the remote sensing data set, we need to have a, a reliable uh, a network of the uh, ground measurement. So we conducted some uh, field works using uh, 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 types, sensor types in soil moisture. And also this is the uh, you know, east, eastern side of the uh, event transpiration. Also this is the water quality of the remote sensing. Also uh, recently we uh, developed some uh, linkage between the atmosphere and the land surface. So, so every year so we uh, suffer from some uh, sand dust and very small particle of the, uh, uh, 
the atmosphere, this is very harmful for health. So we are uh, uh, trying to find uh, some relationship between the soil moisture and also wind speed and also sand dust. So this is you know, ongoing research topics in hydrology. Okay, this is the soil moisture sensors. So uh, I think next slide I can provide some uh, uh, satellite imagery. So this is the uh, AMSA 2 uh, uh, 30 day composite values. So in here is in, in South Korea, we can take uh, some uh, soil moisture value in daily on, on monthly. But here is the first one to use that, uh, that data set. We need to provide some uh, ground based measurement using uh, impedance proof that basically uh, we use the TDR and FDR sensors. So this is the one of my uh, one of our you know uh, ground stations, and then uh, we, we use uh, different sensors to get a soil moisture value. And basically, uh, this is typical form of the uh, FDR sensors. And this is the uh, proof about the six centimeters, so about ten centimeters. Actually, this uh, proof need to be inserted in soil, and then. Uh, the volumetric soil moisture value, actually we can use lay the value from, from this proof to uh, data logs. Basically, uh, they use some uh, difference between the, the uh, difference of the dielectric constant. That is, uh, uh, soil has uh, more or less dielectric constant about the four, value of the four, and also uh, soil moistures, uh, uh, it, it provides about the 80. So this is the big difference of the uh, dielectric constant. We can we can we can see what's going on in the soil. Is how, how you know how much you know the uh, water is included in the soil. So this is the uh, different set of the FDR sensors. Currently, this is very uh, uh, useful. It's very tiny and very uh, sensitive, and this is also very easy to you know portable. So sometimes I I brought these uh, sensors to uh, Jeju Island, but this is not allowed in in, in take in, in in airplane. But this one. Actually, uh, this is very small, and this is very easy to uh, carry. So, okay, this is the uh, one of the uh, our site. It's located in Songyungan campus. So, this is the botanical garden. Actually, uh, each uh, uh, star points. So, we have the value from the site from the one to six, and each site we uh, inserted the we inserted the sensors about the five centimeter different depths, so ten. Uh, 15 or <coughs> and 20 or third. So the, the 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 region of the different depths of the soil moisture value actually uh, uh, remote sensing. Actually, I'm going to talk about this one in later slide. So, so may uh, 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 take the soil moisture value in just uh, surface about the uh, two centimeter, about the one centimeter. This is very surface, but in hydrology and, and other e ecology sessions. Sometimes, you know, nutritional soil moisture value is very important to, to link from the uh, surface to subsurface. So this is the, uh, our region to, uh, to install the different depths of, uh, install the sensor in different depths because, uh, so we also have the five centimeter or two centimeter value and also uh, remote sensing can provide the same depth value and then we can, uh, we can, we can, we can have some relationship and also uh, we can, uh, find some relationship between the uh, lutein soil moisture in based on the ground based measurement and then we can link this value with the uh, remote sensing value so maybe uh, this is the one of the big uh, limitation of the of the remote sensing but we cannot uh, we can provide some uh, some service value of the soil moisture using a uh, ground based measurement okay this is the uh, MSO2 uh, actually uh, uh, a very passive microwave sensors. This is on, currently this is only one. It was only one uh, passive microwave sensor, sensor from the JAXA and also uh, NASA. But uh, last month, I think the end of the uh, January, actually uh, a SMAP uh, satellite was launched successfully, and I saw this some uh, uh, internet news in NASA. And they, they, they have the active and passive sensors, very similar in, in JAXA. So basically, this is the uh, 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 basic, actually, this is basic AMSAT E. So actually, it's launched, it was launched in 2002, and 
you know, uh, actually, unfortunately, in 11, the, one of the rot, you know, rot, rotating sensors was broken, and we can provide, we, we can get the, any more data set in here. And the MSO2, actually the same, very similar, one of the, the, uh, the uh, later series of the MSO E, this is launched, it was launched in 2012, and then we have uh, sort of much value, and this is the special resolution, 25 kilometer, and this is a little bit, you know, the better, 10 and 25, and then actually uh, two times of the uh, ascending and descending of past time, also measurement about the one centimeter or the two centimeters. So this is the actually the series because, you know, the uh, I think uh, 20 years ago we cannot imagine this is the solar moisture map of the globe scale, but this is you know a lot of you know applications can be. Uh, 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 utilized based on this one. So some, some people think about you know, climbing models. So some areas is very dry and some areas very wet. So this, this, this information is very important in crop production and agriculture, <coughs> ecology, and climate. And also some, uh, 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 some cooperation also. So basically, <coughs> sort of much a map. This is the uh, 2012 in the fourth time. So the basically, uh, uh, lead point shows a little bit dry, and also uh, uh, blue point provide a little bit wet and moderate wet portions. So this is validation study of the MSO2. So we thought uh, some map, I think it's, it's you guys, I expect you know, listen about the all about the some map missions, NASA, right? So actually, uh, two years ago, uh, I, this is the uh, some site in South Korea. But I think it's more than, I think it's 100 point, more than 100 point is available in different government agency. It's in, in RDA, in also uh, meteorology, right? KMA, so, and some uh, uh, ecology uh, government agency. The problem is that they use the different sensors. Some, ad, some agency use uh, TDR, and also some, some agency use FDR, and also different sensor, and different calibration stuff. So everything is different. And also, uh, I got this one, is RD, I think it's RDA site. At yeah, some point, I've, we found a negative value of the soil moisture, but it's, it's not possible in, in some time. But we, many times we control, uh, we use uh, some uh, quality flag and, and find which, which site is, has a reliable uh, value. So, so this is, I think, about the nine site, very small number of the site. And then we, we thought this is actually MS2 actually launched two years ago, but we, we never found any publication about the, uh, how much accurate in MS2. And this is basically, we, we, we thought you know, the same um, series of the passive microwaves, and then uh, this is the one thing. One different thing is MSA E actually you know, in collaboration between the JAXA and NASA, and but you know MSA two. This is only uh, uh, a product of the JAXA. So we actually uh, got some information, and then we, we we know that this collaboration is still ongoing. But you know we we, we want to provide some preliminary result for what is going on in uh, MSA two. And actually, uh, one of my students actually we we published this one is one of the uh, Japan uh, meteorology uh, journals, and then we, we got a lot of you know the the problems about the MSA two, and then the problem is this is too sensitive in, in precipitations, and then this is too sensitive in forest site, so this is due to uh, some of the uh, uh, collaboration or some of the a typical characteristic of the sensors. And then we, we thought only use, you know, the, uh, the only MSO E data, MSO 2 data, is, 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 is not going to be very helpful to understand the soil moisture, you know, temporal and special patterns. So we thought, you know, so we need to, uh, you know, get another, you know, third soil moisture value from GLDES. This is the uh, Global Land Data Simulation System. And then, so even if this is scale is very coarse, about 
0.25 degree or something. And then we got the gel that's the soil moisture and also uh, uh, we got the uh, in situ soil moisture, the MSO2, ascending and descending, and this is the combinations. So we plotted the time series and also we plotted uh, uh, radial plus. So here, it's very interesting things. So we use the triple collocations at estimation. But this is the one of the uh, you know, core technique to uh, data simulation stuff. And then in the here, you can see that here, uh, MSO2 shows the worst value. That means MSO2 has more errors compared to GLS and, and in situ. And then here is a green line and also bl black line. Also, uh, in situ data set showed less efficient value compared to GLS. This is very interesting. And then this is this something problem in, in in situ values. But we found a lot of papers about the data simulation and then most of the papers, I think it's more than 90% papers, in situ value is you know, always better than satellite and also some modeling region. But here is Korea, this is you know, so, something opposite the region because we have very limited value of the soil moisture. So I think I want to I want to show a lot of you know this kind of stuff in you know a lot of hy hydrologists in Korea because we, we you don't know you know how much you know ground based measurement is very important to provide the validation data set also some scientific stuff but this is something weird because I'm hydrologist using the remote sensing I'm not, I'm not I'm not focusing on the ground based measurement but ground based measurement always very important if you think about the remote sensing is is kind of advancing techniques also plus uh, ground-based measurement also uh, important things to provide uh, data simulation step systems. So this is the MSO2 uh, special mapping of the uh, summer time, and this is the uh, September. So you can see the wet and dry patterns in here. But here's some point of the uh, uh, lead point. I think this is some, you know, so mismatch between the uh, uh, sea coast and, and, and ocean and land portion here. And this is pa passive microwave system, and this is the uh, active ASCAT soil moisture from the TU bean. And also we use uh, this data set uh, and then compare the, the active sensor and passive sensors. So I think, as, 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 as you guys know, the passive sensors just collect you know, uh, uh, natural uh, emitted uh, radioactive active from the uh, ob object. But active sensor actually you know, giving some signal to the object, and then we, 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 we can collect some returning signal from the object. This, this is the difference. And the passive microwave systems, you know, the lot of the US uh, I use a passive microwave system, and uh, the uh, European countries, you know, basically uh, uh, use uh, uh, active sensors. But active sensors, I think, in 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 the, in the lizard, our lizard, the, we found that the ASCAT from TUB showed uh, uh, best lizard. But the, we we before that one, we thought uh, ASCAT the active sensor is very uh, vulnerable because. Uh, the land cover and some topography of the South Korea is very heterogeneous. It's a very complicated system. You know, the active sensors, you know, sometimes, you know, backscatter is, is one of the serious problems to uh, 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 provide some errors. So, but here is we, uh, we thought ASCAT, uh, you know, need to be uh, modified or something, but, you know, okay, so this is the, you also use the nine site. And then ground based soil moisture. And then this is the same uh, uh, radial plus the ASCAT MSA E, NSI. MSA E has uh, three different versions NS NSI DC and the VUA in here. And this is uh, surface soil moisture, and this is the surface. Uh, uh, this is R value, and this is the uh, atmospheric error. And this is the root zone and the zones. Each plus shows a different uh, result, error characteristic. It's the, uh, in conclusions, we found the ASCAT is more uh, reliable compared to uh, MSA-E 
and also uh, other stuff here. And then this is the AMSA E soil moisture spatial mapping in dry season, and this is the wet season. And this is the ASCAT, also the same date in here, June 9th, and this is June 9th in dry, and this is the uh, uh, July 18th, right, 18th. So special mapping, I think it's you know, different regions of the soil moisture. So we're still uh, studying, you know, what is the difference of the two different sensors and the different values here. Okay, soil moisture, this is the, uh, and here is actually, uh, uh, so, so, you know, we didn't include in here st about the uh, important uh, remote sensing uh, analysis in downscaling, also some uh, data simulation stuff in, in soil moisture. We just provide a brief description of the new sensor about the AMSA2 and ASCAT. But this is the passive and, and active sensors to provide a special mapping of soil moisture in surface conditions. Just the five centimeter values we saw here. And then second is, is the evapotranspirations. I, I think it's a, it's a pack also has some flux tower data set, right? Flux tower. Okay, so this is flux tower in Henam site. And actually, uh, this is the Henam. And I think it's more, you know, different sensors and different uh, uh, operations. This is a pan evaporation. This is very, very conventional. We put in the uh, water and then it measures how much water is, uh, uh, goes into the atmosphere. And uh, we, we, we found this is some of the loss <coughs> of the water to atmosphere. This is conventional uh, pan evaporation. And also this is a uh, flux tower measurement from uh, Solmachon on areas, and this is the Henam Coplox site. So basically, a uh, flux tower measured energy flux and the water vapor and uh, uh, several <laughs> hydrogen charge variables based on eddy covariance method, and also some of the <coughs> CO2 and water, and also methanes. And then, you know, measurements about the flux tower has a lot of interesting about the hydraulic sessions. And then this is a satellite about the about uh, evapotranspiration, as we can use a Landsat and we can use a motors. This is just the two examples. We can use goals and also we can use comms. But this one just a simple example of the uh, uh, evapotranspiration, a Landsat it basically has three meters, a little bit higher, uh, higher special resolutions. And this is very easy to find this is the east, eastern parts always are wet, and you know some of the. This is actually a desert areas, Texas and Utah areas, shows always better less evapotranspiration patterns. That is very dry areas. This is very helpful to understand. You know, 30 meters and 100 meters, something about the catchment scale, and the modus. It it can provide one kilometers. But this is a more regional uh, scale evapotranspiration. Actually, uh, uh, you know, some folks about the Montana and some folks of the NASA and USDA people use uh, modus value uh, data set to provide a regional or a continental scale ET product here. OK, this is the energy balance method. Basically, this is also uh, uh, one of the examples you know, of the estimation, the evapotranspiration. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one source model and two source model. So basically, if you have the, some vegetation here, this is uh, uh, something ground. And we can have uh, some net addition, and this is incoming, and this is sensor heat flux, and this is the uh, latent heat flux. So this is the, the simple energy balance equations. So evapotranspiration can be measured by Rn minus G minus H. This is very simple, but we need, to, we need to get this value from some of the hydrogen charge value. And this is the G sometimes you know, disregarded, but here we can get this value from some measurement over some 
uh, estimation. And so sensor hit flux is one of the critical value. So this is the most critical value because sensor hit flux is very uh, dynamic conditions about the uh, air movement between the vertical point is. So we have a lot of heterogeneous points about the wind speed and, and, and uh, at the Copernicus system, we need to get some uh, uh, stability theory to, to estimate the sensor heat fluxes. So this is one source model. So if you have the some, uh, okay, so here, this is the tree, the best stations. One source model, so everything is in one column. So it, it doesn't matter. So we have the ground, we have the best station, we have whatsoever Land cover types, just the one column. This is one source model. Very simple. Not very simple, but in here, compared to two source, simple. Two source model, so we, we divide, we can divide uh, vegetation and the soil. So basically, transpiration from tree and evaporation from the soil surface. So more complicated, but more accurate, but need a more data set. Right? Sorry. Okay. Okay, sorry. So I think that if I was a PhD student actually in USDA, we conducted the uh, two source model because we have very reliable data set about the, uh, 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 the air temperature between the canopy and the soil and you know, all types of the uh, you know, values was, were you know, available at that time. But when I came back to Korea, so we, uh, this is, you know, I can't use the two source model anymore because this is very hard to get the data set. And then actually uh, we focus on the one source model and they're a little bit simpler and a little bit, you know, less, you know, input data set. But we try to find, you know, reliable estimation of the ET uh, compared with the uh, two source model. So this is one of the one source model and surface energy balance model steps. So this is the basic uh, 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 energy balance stuff. And this is the uh, uh, calculation about the H. So SEPS model is more, I think is, is a more attractive model because the less you know, required input data set or also very automatically, this is easy to find you know, optimal value of the sensor heat fluxes. <coughs> so right hand side, the SEPS algorithms, we can use, uh, this is a morning of stability theories. So I, I mentioned that the H calculation is very hard to get the converged values. Many times it, 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 it diverts. So uh, we need to keep more stable condition about the atmosphere because the edge calculation, based on the edge calculations, uh, latent heat flux is you know, entirely uh, you know, the based on the edge values. So we use uh, you know, the tons of the iterations to find the reliable edge value. And then, so edge scaling at the dry and the wet emitted, and then finally we can get the uh, ET values. So this is the Pema Monte. Pema Monte is very general, very conventional mm -hmm. equations. We use a uh, modulus uh, atmospheric product and emotion sensing inputs. It's very simple without the calculation, without the iterations, we can get the uh, modulus algorithm to find uh, ET estimation. So this is one of the, uh, you know, the equations we, we use the net additions. So all of the stuff we, we, we were able to get this data set from the modus, entire modus, and then we found the EVAP transpiration. And this is the same uh, equations. So this is one example uh, from January. And yes, so January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I don't know why my students make uh, this kind of the, you know, orders. See, so weird, right? So this is January, March, April. We got some dry patterns, and then summertime more, you know, a little bit about the wet, and also uh, from the fall to uh, winter time, we found uh, a little bit dry. And then in here, this is Seoul and in Gyeonggi. This is the urbanized areas. Always is is a missed value. So this is one of the problem of the modus data set. 
And then this is the, some expansion from the South Korea to North Korea and then some of the uh, 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 China's in here. So January, February, uh, this is you know, you know, the correct orders. So uh, right, the springtime a little bit drier, and then winter time a little bit uh, wet portions. So this is the Pemamanti equations. Very simple stuff about the evapotranspiration. And the unit is the watt per square meters, uh, 500 square meters, I think, 500 watt per square meters, about a, 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 a four or five millimeter per day or something. This is conversion of the uh, uh, units. So you can see the here, right? So the resolution is one kilometer. OK. So this is the uh, further studies to use uh, uh, evapotranspiration value. So here, this is the actual evapotranspiration <coughs> value. So we can use this value in here. And then we also calculate the potential evapotranspiration. So we, we think the potential evapotranspiration, the, there was no limitation about the waters. So this is the ratio of the AT divided by PT. Actually, this is the fraction of the uh, uh, drought. And then we use the, some anomaly value. And then we can get here dry and wet. So this is actually drought map. So May, June, July, August, the September, the uh, uh, south part you know, suffer from some dry patterns. And also here, based on the uh, monsoon climate, we, 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 we uh, you know, found some you know, wet conditions in here. And then based on this one, I, we just you know, the, you know, the link it with the uh, uh, drought index value. And then this is Google map. Actually, we have the country. We have the huge area, huge map for uh, ESI. This is basically evaporation stress index. So this is basically based on the uh, evapotranspiration estimation drought index. So here's, I think this is the uh, last year, May, a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, the North Korean actually suffer from you know, serious you know, drought in here. So we, we found here is a very uh, general pattern about that one. And then this is the, uh, you know, up to now we, we found, you know, uh, foreigner satellite in here. This is the Chilean Combs VCI. We used a uh, uh, very simple vegetation condition index. And then we want to, uh, you know, get how much, uh, you know, how it is reliable to provide, you know, drought index in here. But fortunately, you know, comes data set, we can get comes data set about the 30 hours or several times per day. And then we actually can, you know, get the gap filling value in here, so the urbanized areas. So currently, we uh, uh, are working on the some uh, collaboration between the modus data set plus the comms, because each, each one has, you know, advantage and disadvantages. So we want to get the, you know, we want to extract some advantage values. Rainfall, I think, I think so you guys better, you know, knows better than me. And we used some rain gauges and radar. And then we also used the combs and, and trims. So first stuff, so we uh, used some, you know, clicking value, clicking special mapping using uh, AWS system. And also we get value from the combs, and also we get from the trims. So first, the simple thing is we just configured special patterns among three different stuff. And then we found that combs data sets more similar with the uh, clicking values. This is the first step. And then next step, we actually, we actually, uh, 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 focused on some uh, merging uh, precipitation product uh, using satellite and uh, ATR system. So it's just very hard, right? So basically, blue point, each right blue point evaluation site. So this is a fixed value. And then each red point, right? Each red point actually uh, uh, we classified 
First one is scenario 0, and second one is scenario 1, 2, 3, 4. As the number is increased, actually we, uh, uh, we use the bunch of sites. And here is about the used site, about the 4, and this is a 6, this is 10, like that. So we increase the number of the, you know, the uh, ground-based site because we want to see how much uh, important about the density of the ground-based measurement. And then uh, this plot, actually, this plot actually uh, comparison between the uh, 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 lane gauges value in, in, in red point and this is blue point is about the combs. So something similar and something different. But we found that here uh, combs data still has a, you know, some, 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 some challenging point to detect rainfall values here. So a lot of uh, result in here, is, and, and you know the overall without uh, uh, satellite information is very critical to provide reliable estimation of the uh, precipitation patterns. This, the the particularly very heterogeneous rainfall patterns, uh, remote sensing value is very uh, uh, efficient to provide a special mapping here. Okay, basically, this is the key, key finding here. This is just the simple clickings. So we used some uh, uh, two point or three points. So we, we found some, you know, leather eyes, bull's eyes here, and also a little bit increased number, but still, you know, something weird. And this is more reliable, but still, you know, special pattern is, is about the, you know, very uh, kind of the door in here. But this is, uh, uh, this is the C, C, M, and this is the, you know, merged value G, D, A, and this is G, R, A. All of the stuff use a precipitation value from the combs. And then special pattern, you know, everything is provided more detailed special patterns. So we think in here, uh, if you have huge number of the ground-based measurements, clicking value is the best one. But it's, it's not going to be happen in the real you know, environment. So if you have very few sites, two or three sites, and we have the, some satellite value, so it, can, it may provide reliable estimation about the special patterns, about the precipitation. So this is the uh, special heterogeneous of the precipitation. Based on this you know, error process, we found that uh, uh, comes value is a more efficient, more useful to provide the reliable estimation about the aerial average value of precipitation. And then we thought, I thought, uh, we have transpiration and soil moisture, and also different bunch of different satellite value, and then some ground-based measurement. And the last part in the CRM, I think this is very, you know, one of the popular uh, land surface modeling system to uh, combination of the different uh, atmosphere value and atmosphere modeling system and the ecology stuff and hydrology stuff. So this is, the, I think, uh, uh, a lot of people, hydrologists, to use uh, CRM models. This is, you know, general uh, uh, diagram schemes of the uh, uh, CRM. And then it used some top model schemes and also some mosaic and energy and water balances calculated in, in LSM systems. So Kriggings based on uh, ground-based measurement and the satellite, and also this one, uh, uh, LSM-based special mapping. So we actually used the three different stuff in ground-based measurement and the satellite and the modeling system to compare it, you know, the trip collocation to provide optimal value of the uh, water and uh, energy proxies. So that additions, everything the same, H value and L value, and this is the G and the soil moisture and the soil temperature. So we got this one is every three hours and then a 10 kilometer resolution. And then one of uh, uh, new topic is that we, 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 uh, we get some RCP scenario value and free in the 100 years value to predict how much uh, evapotranspiration and how much drought and sensor heat fluxes. This happened based on the climate change. 
And this is total study areas and uh, we run in uh, CLM model about the 100 years, right? More than 100 years from 1950 to uh, 2100. And then uh, we found uh, H value a little bit slightly decreased in here. It's a bit, uh, this is apparent, right? And then ET actually, you know, has affected the patterns with H value and <coughs> This one is slightly increased than early values. So I think this is still ongoing studies where we found uh, uh, based on uh, uh, climate change and RCP 4.5 and 8.5, you know, whatever uh, scenarios, we expect uh, more precipitation provide more, uh, right? No, no, no. Uh, okay, more precipitation due to uh, more event transpiration. Also, more event transpiration actually uh, provide more soil moisture, actually. But this is no truth about the relationship between uh, land surface, soil moisture, and event transpiration, also precipitations. I think so. I went to, you know, the last year, the AGU, and one session, hydrology meteorology sessions, a lot of, you know, folks about which one is first. So we, we think which one is first, the egg is first, or chicken is first. So this is, you know, different aspect. So we found here is the uh, latent heat fluxes, and then evapotranspirations, a little bit increased patterns, you know, up to uh, 2100. So we expect more precipitation and the more uh, uh, soil moisture. And then some folks, you know, thought more uh, evapotranspiration actually, uh, you know, you know, can't take water from the soil, and actually soil is going to be dry, and, you know, the more frequent, you know, drought we can, you know, observe in, in future times. So this is, you know, a lot of contradiction, a lot of, you know, you know the uh, agreement and disagreement, I think, in here, the current, you know, hydrologic, uh, you know, folks, scientists in here. So this is the conclusion. So. Uh, right, so remote sensing, and some uh, ground-based measurement, and some modeling stuff. So we can combine, we can use uh, simula a simulation stuff to provide open values. Okay, but this is my information. And then, I don't know, maybe next time, if I have <laughs> one more time opportunity, next time I can provide more, you know, you know information. But there's a limited time, so, uh, I try to provide a little bit, you know, big picture about the, uh, our lab, you know, classification. Okay, okay. thank you.